Hi viewers, welcome to our channel Learn and Apply. Our today tutorial is focused on designing and implementing monitoring evaluation research and learning system MERL system or MNE system. We will take a detailed look at the key steps involved in creating a robust MERL or MNE system that can effectively track progress, assess impact and inform decision making. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share with your family and friend and hit the notification bell. The key content of our today's video are first we will discuss what is MERL. Then we will discuss how to design and implement MERL systems. What are the key steps? Then we will explore the key components of MNE systems and examples of different sectors. And then I will share with you examples of MERL system for different sectors. We uploaded numerous video tutorial in this series. In the first one, we discussed some foundational aspects of monitoring evaluation and research. Then in the second one, we discussed monitoring in detail. And in the third one, we discussed evaluation. And in the fourth one, we discussed result-based management. If you haven't watched these videos, the links are given in the description. First, let's discuss what MERL stands for. Basically, MERL stands for Monitoring, Evaluation, Research and Learning. Different terminologies are used. MNE systems, MERL system, meal system, monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning systems. Approach is same. So MERL is basically a systematic approach used to track project performance, assess impact, and gather insights to inform decision making. A well-designed MERL system or MNE system helps ensure that projects achieve their objectives and deliver meaningful outcome. Why these MNE and MERL systems are important? MERL systems provide data-driven evidence to inform decision making, improve accountability, and enhance learning. They ensure that projects are on track to achieve their goals and deliver impact. Designing and implementing a monitoring evaluation research and learning systems involves several critical steps to ensure that the systems effectively track progress, assess impact, and inform decision making. Now, here are the key steps which we need to ensure while designing and implementing MNE system. We will discuss each of this step in detail in next slide. Here I am just showing you all the essential steps. When you are starting to design monitoring and evaluation systems, so you need to understand that project objectives and outcome. You will need to review some documents. Next step is then to develop a comprehensive MNE plan. Then the next step is to design monitoring tools and methods. The fourth step is to implement the monitoring system and data collection and management. Then the fifth step is to conduct evaluation and analyze. And then the sixth step is to report and learn, reporting and learning. And the seventh step, which is a cross cutting and needs to be ensured in all these steps is to ensure accountability and continuous improvement. Now let's discuss each step in detail. Step number one involves understanding the project objectives in context. We need to start by thoroughly reviewing project documentation such as goals, objectives and results framework. Next, we need to engage with key stakeholder, project partners, beneficiaries and team members to understand their needs and expectations. This foundational step is crucial for tailoring the MERL system to the specific context of your project. For example, in an education project which is aimed at improving literacy rate, we will need to review documents outlining the goal to enhance literacy in primary schools. We will need to consult with teacher, parents and school administrators to understand their expectation and needs regarding the literacy program.
Number two, to develop a comprehensive MERL or ME plan. First, we need to define clear measurable indicators aligned with the project objectives. These should include both quantitative and qualitative measures. For example, if you are working in a renewable energy project, so your indicators might include the number of households adopting solar panels or changes in energy consumption. And then we will need to establish baselines. We will need to collect baseline data starting point before project implementation begins. So while we are developing a mini plan, so we will need to define indicators and then we will need to establish baseline for these indicators. For example, if you are working in this type of project, we will need to conduct surveys to determine the current energy usage and access to renewable energy sources in target or if you are working in the health vaccination coverage so we will need to collect baseline on current vaccination rate Step number three involve designing monitoring tools and methods. We need to develop and customize tools such as surveys, interview guides and observation checklist. For example, for that energy project, we will need to design a survey to assess community awareness and attitude towards energy technologies. Or if we are working in a wash sector, so we will need to design surveys on water access. Then after Creating data collection tools, we will need to choose data collection methods. We will need to decide on methods such as surveys, interviews, focus groups, and feed observation depending on the nature of the data needed. For example, we will need to use interviews with local stakeholders to gather qualitative insights into the challenges and benefits of adopting new energy technology. If we are working in WASH, so we will need to use field observation to assess sanitation facilities. Step number four, focus on implementing data collection and management. In this stage, we need to train project staff and data collector on data collection procedures to ensure consistency and accuracy. For example, we will need to conduct workshops to train field staff on using digital data collection tools like Kobo, Toolbox or Survey CTO. Or if our project is on disaster preparedness, so we will need to train volunteer on disaster preparedness service. Then after training and capacity building, we will need data management. We will need to set up systems for data entry, applying different validation fields criteria, and then we will need to decide about the storage of the data and management. We will need to ensure data security and confidentiality. For example, we need to implement a secure database for storing collected data with regular backups and access control. The fifth one is to conduct evaluation and analyze the data. We will need to evaluate performance. Use the collected data to evaluate project performance against the defined indicator. For example, uh, analyze data to determine the impact of the energy project on local energy consumption and environmental sustainability. If we are working on that energy project. If we are working in child protection, so we will need to evaluate the effectiveness of child protection intervention. Then we will need to analyze results. We will need to employ statistical and qualitative analysis methods to interpret the data and identify trends, patterns, and insights. We will need to use statistical softwares to assess the changes in energy use if we are working in energy project. Or if we are working in a child protection project, so we will need to analyze trends and child abuse reports. Then the sixth step is reporting. 
we will need to develop comprehensive reports summarizing findings conclusion and a recommendation for example uh, preparing a quarterly report for donors detailing progress towards the project goals and highlighting key achievement and challenges and then we will need to share the lesson learned we will need to facilitate learning sessions to share findings with stakeholders and incorporate into project implementation we will need to organize workshops to discuss successes and challenges and develop action plans to address identified issues the seventh step which is a cross cutting is to ensure accountability and continuous improvement feedback mechanism we will need to implement to collect input from stakeholders for example in the health sector we will need to create a feedback mechanism for health workers to suggest improvement for the vaccination camp the next one is to review and adjust based on the feedback we will need to regularly review the system and make adjustment as needed to ensure it remains relevant and effective we will need to conduct periodic reviews of the monitoring tools and indicators to ensure they are aligned with the project needs and content the key components of mni system number 1 is project objective then indicators baseline data data collection tools data collection methods monitoring plan evaluation plan learning and adaptation reporting stakeholder feedback quality assurance and feedback loops these are the different components of an mne or mrl system let's discuss each one of them project objective if we are working an education project to enhance literacy rates in rural primary school this objective sets the direction for all mne activities ensuring that every action taken align with the aim of improving educational outcomes now the next component which is indicators so indicators basically are specific measurable factors used to track progress and assess the impact of the project for example for our literacy improvement project we have indicators such as an increase in students reading levels and improved teacher performance these metrics help quantify the project success then the next component is baseline data before the project begins baseline data is collected to understand the initial conditions for instance a current literacy rates are at 45% and teacher performance is deemed satisfactory by 60% of now this information serve as a reference points to measure future impact and the next component is data collection tools to gather relevant data we use various tools such as survey teacher assessment form and student reading tests these tools are essential for collecting accurate and comprehensive information about the project's progress the next component is data collection method we employ techniques like surveys for students and teacher and classroom observation to collect data these methods ensure that we capture a complete picture of the educational environment and student performance then the next component is monitoring plan the monitoring plan involves regularly tracking the project's progress against the defined indicator for example monthly surveys help us monitor changes in literacy rates and evaluate teacher performance ensuring that the project stays on track then the next component is evaluation plan periodic evaluations assess the overall impact and effectiveness of the project mid term evaluation for example analyze changes in literacy rates and teacher effectiveness to determine whether the project is achieving its goal or not in the next component is learning and adaptation this is very important learning and adaptation involves using data and evaluation results to refine and improve the project if the feedback from evaluation suggests that certain teaching methods are not effective for example so we will need to adjust our strategies to better meet the project subject learning mechanism helps organization to reflect on their experiences share knowledge and adapt strategies 
And then the ninth component is reporting. Involves preparing and sharing reports that summarize finding, conclusion, and recommendation. For example, quarterly progress reports keeps stakeholders informed, while annual detail evaluation reports provide a comprehensive overview of the project success. And the next component is stakeholder feedback. Feedback mechanisms are crucial for gathering insights from beneficiaries and other stakeholders. So feedback forms for teachers and students along with community meetings help us understand their perspective and make necessary adjustment to the problem. Then we have quality assurance to ensure the accuracy and reliability of data and implementation processes quality assurance practices are employed. This includes regular training for data collectors and data validation checks to maintain high standard. And then the next component is feedback loops. Feedback loops involve integrating stakeholder feedback into project design and implementation. For example, quarterly review meetings to discuss feedback and make adjustments ensuring that the project remains responsive to the needs of beneficiaries. This table includes these various components of the MNU system with their respective details. This table provides a structure overview of the MNU system components and illustrates how they come together to support the project objective. You can see here the component and example. You can pause the video here and discuss them in detail. Here you can see an example of MNE system for education sector. Here you can see each component and then here you can see the details of these components. This is an example from health sector. Wash sector. If you have any question or need further assistance feel free to reach out my contact information is on the screen in this video tutorial we discussed the essential steps for designing and implementing mne or merl systems from understanding project objectives to ensuring continuous improvement applying these principles will help you build a robust mne or merl systems that support effective project management and decision making Thank you for joining this tutorial and I look forward to your feedback and questions in the comments. Your engagement is valuable to me. Feel free to leave any feedback or suggestions for other topics that you would like us to cover in our video tutorials. Have a great day. See you in the next video. If you visit our channel so you can find lots of YouTube and playlists on monitoring, evaluation and research, what is monitoring, how to do it designing logical framework result framework theory of change don't forget to subscribe like share with your family and friend and hit the notification bell